Okay, here's the update of my system. I've changed it a little bit, so we're going to throw a little update. Still have the same array up top. That's a 720 watt array. That was the one I had before. It comes down, <coughs> goes into a main disconnect that's over here. Then what I added is a new array up here. That's a 530 watt, two 265 watt Kyocera panels, 24 volt. That comes down. I have a secondary disconnect for that array right there. Inside of this one, let's see, open this up a little bit here, hang on a second. I have this. It's a regular little QO load center breaker. It's rated to 48 volts, so you're good on that. It was 24 volts coming down, so that's for 12 and 24, you can use the QO load centers, and they're DC rated to 48 volts, so you can use that. That's a disconnect there fusing. All right, so let's cruise over here. And we'll see what's happening. How you doing, YouTube? All right. So now we come over here. Still have the same array up there. That's the rooftop one, 720. And this is the one here that I added on top of the bar. That's the 530 watt array. Now the reason I added this array right here is because in the morning time the sun comes up from you know the angle like here's this. The sun rises over here and it comes up and it takes a while to hit those panels I want to charge my system as fast as possible so that one catches all the morning Sun and the afternoon Sun but it just cranks in the morning and gives me the amperage to boost my batteries up super fast that's why I didn't put it <clears throat> up here because you know I'm not getting anything till 10 o'clock in the morning where this one here 730 I'm putting out thing I'm charging my batteries up over here I have this little Harbor Freight kit. I bought a trailer. This came with it. The guy was charging his battery. So basically what I'm using this for, oh, excuse me, right here is just to charge the RV battery. That's about all that thing's good for. All right, let's go in here, Harbor Freight. No, I wouldn't buy one, but oh, I know I got it for free. Might as well use it. Okay, we come into here. Same thing, still have some diagrams. I gotta change all that up. And right here, I got my voltage for my 24 bank battery bank. And this is my battery discharge in amp hours. So if I use 60 amp hours at night, my take 20, you know, 80% is what my discharge is. And the same thing, and my battery's at 80%. If I take 80 amp hours off, I'm at 75%. The 60 to 60, 60 to 70 amp hours, it's about between 15, 1800 watts. It's pretty good. Get into the system. This is the MPPT charge controller. And this charges a 720 watt array. And I had this one before, so I moved this over. This is charging what's on the roof. So there's two different arrays. One's on the 720s on this one. And this one's a PWM charge controller. And this is what's on the roof of the bar. And uh, works really good. I mean, it puts out some amps. Right now, what are we doing? Oops. I'm at 8.89 amps coming in right now off that one. And the other one is coming in at, what does that say there? 11, I don't know, it's putting in 4.9. Now the reason this one's putting in less is because I'm already up on my voltage. So it'll start cranking up. Now that it's turned on, okay. Come down here, we got fusing coming in. This one here is from the 720. This one here goes to this one here. We've got some fusing. Spot some little 30 amp jobbers. They work good, work perfectly fine. And it works as a disconnect too. Because right here, I can trip it, and there's a disconnect. This disconnect here is, if you're looking at right there, that one is for the 720 water race. So the, comes in I can turn off this one here I can turn it off at a disconnect I can turn it off here and fused in and out one thing about these fuses here so this fuse right here luckily on the roof I have a fuse right at the solar panels that's hundred and fifty volts then I have another fuse at the disconnect that's good for 125 volts well MPPT is coming in so my before I'm at 24 volts. These are rated for 32 volts. These ones here and these ones here, 32 volts. Well, 
of course I'm good coming out. I'm 32 volts coming out. I'm 32 going in, 30, you know, I'm good. Well, this one right here, the N, well, that one there, now that I'm MPPT, which I didn't think about, a lot of people probably don't, I'm bringing in, you know, up here, I'm bringing in 115 volts. Well, now, I don't know if that fuse is <laughs> going to work or not. It's kind of there as a latch disc effort. It's the third one in line, but, you know, it's not rated for the voltage that I'm bringing in because I'm going to MPPT. I'm bringing up the voltage and the less amps coming in. So there's vulnerability, but I've got two more in line before that thing. Same with this one. This one comes in. I have the one I just showed you outside. So I have a 30 amp fuse out there plus another one here. It's always good to fuse it, over fuse it if you have to. Coming here, I still have the Kotec 1500 watt, 24 volt inverter. And for what I'm doing, thing works perfect. That thing right there draws 20 watts on all the time. It's just 20 watts. You lose it, boom, done, gone. There's the ghost of the load center, so it comes out of there, goes over, comes down into the load center from the load center the main one coming in is the power from that and I power up my other things all on breakers everything in here so it's just like your panel at your house you know everything's off grid and I run those loads to the house and I got this little meter here this one's pretty damn cool so I got this off eBay so what this is doing is it's telling me my AC volts so what am I taking I'm 120 volts 1.4 amps for 167 watts and the other one, 64 kilowatts, is what I've pulled off it so far since I started it up. That's great, because I always wanted to know, what am I using? So now this tells me what I'm using. A couple bucks on eBay, it's pretty cheap. It works out really good. Down here, I still get the same. Got my disconnect from my battery. Comes over as the battery shut off. Goes into the inverter, positive, negative. All the negatives are white tape. All the positives are red tape. All the way around. So if you look here... White, red, negative, positive. That way, there's no confusion, just like your house. Then, another thing I did here, here's all my grounding. So everything comes in, goes back, one ground outside, everything hits it, the other array, everything. See the one there labeled battery bank, ground. Yes, I ground the battery bank. A lot of people forget about that, don't ground your battery bank. You definitely want to ground your battery bank. Do it. If you haven't done it, get a six gauge, run it over, ground the battery bank. Just like your car, the battery bank's grounded to the chassis, you want to ground it. So I round that to the ground. All my grounds hit there, goes back out. Ching. Here's a little Harbor Freight jobber. So that's just charging the uh, motorhome battery, like I said. That's all it's doing, keeping the charge on that. You see it climb up as the clouds go over and come back. I have a little fan here, so I installed this little fan. What this one does, I have a point in here to cool it off. <coughs> what I did here, computer fans. Install a little computer fan right there, blows right into that. Then I have another one down here that's gonna blow up. These things work great. Blows right up in there. Keeps this cool, cools it off. Little computer ones, they draw milliamps, nothing. I'll show you how that sucker works in a second here. All right. Hey, here comes the big guy. Oh, I got big one. Here's the battery bank. Down here, look at them go, look at them go. I want more. I got 12 T105 golf cart batteries, 220 amp hours. That's what's going on there. So it's 660 amp hours that I have. From the last one, I added four more, so I went up to 24 volts. This is a little fan. I can turn the fans on and off. This little switch goes over there. This runs off 12 volts. Well, how you do that, sucker? Goes right up here. Yep. There you go. 12 volt. Step down. So you buy this little sucker for 20 bucks. Tie it into your 24 volt battery. And you step it down to 12. So now I can run 12 volt fans. This is a 12 volt fan. It all runs off of that little step down. 360 watt one. Always go bigger than what you think you're going to get. Over here I have the fuse, 150 amp fuse that's going out to my inverter. This here I put a bus bar, so behind this, so, you know, hit the positives. All my positives land there, so that's a 24 volt. There's my positive bus bar. Come over here, there's my negative bus bar. Everything runs over there. 
right off the negative, right off the positive, then it goes in. All my charge controllers come in, then it goes to the battery, comes out. Oh, it's good, 24 volt system. Works out pretty good. All right, the next little jobber I got here. I say, what? Okay, I got a shunt. That's a funny looking shunt, if you ask me. What's this little cable doing right here, right? Another little eBay find. It's like 20 bucks. This thing is awesome. So my negative comes out, goes into my shunt, from my shunt, goes over, hits my negative bus bar, so now I can measure what's coming out of my battery. eBay find. Check it out. Booyah! This little jobber right here, right? That thing is freaking awesome. Tells me exactly what I got. So right now it says my battery's at 28.79 volts. Tells you what you're taking out, what you're putting in. Get right here. So you can scroll it down. So right now, if they had a negative where it says 4.3 amps, I'm actually still putting 4.4 amps at 118 watts into the battery. Where you see the 4.4, if that has a negative, that's what I'm taking out of the battery. Then below, it shows my amp hours. So right now, I'm on a negative. So I'm negative 0.13, not even one amp hour off the battery because I'm drawing more than I'm making right now. Then below it, it shows you the watt hours. Hard to see that. It'll show you the watt hours. So they have those Bogart meters. Well, they're expensive. This one here, it's like 22 bucks on eBay. Order for eBay, tells me everything I want to know. So at the end of you know, at night, I can see what my battery voltage is. This is coming off the battery bank. The other meter is coming off of the AC voltage. Then you can see the difference. How do I know I had 20 watts of my inverter running? Because this right here tells me that I'm having 20 watts. When I got nothing going on over there, I'm still showing 20 watts coming out of the inverter just to have that inverter powered up. That tells you a lot. This is great. If you can't afford to get the Bogart, you know, I didn't want to drop a bunch of coin on that thing. I found this. It does basically the same functions tells you everything you want to know and you just can't beat it and then it actually comes with this right here so you know and everything's it's the motor or the cable right here is just powering up everything else in here is wireless and you know it just sends the signal <coughs> really really good I advise getting that so now I can keep track of what's coming out of my battery bank how many I'm using AC what the difference is so at night, I run this thing down, and basically, I'm taking 20 watts, no matter what, plus I'm doing a draw. So if I take 1,500 watts of AC power in the house, you know, 1.5 kilowatts of power that I'm using at night, then this is going to be 1,740 watts coming off my battery. So you say, well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is, is that the 1740 is... 20 volts or 20 watts is taken to run my inverter. So even though I'm only using 1500 in a house, I'm taking 700 and 1720 off my battery bank. And this little thing right here, this little jobber right here, tells me all I need to know. Perfect. Now I can figure out how much I'm truly using, how much I'm using on the AC on the other side. It tells me what my percentage is at the end of the day because you look at the percentage and I go down to like. 24.9 okay well I know I'm at 80% of discharge how many amp hours do I have left in here how many amp hours do I take out just like the Bogart but for like 24 25 bucks get it check it out I found it on eBay all right that's pretty much the system update for now get a little battery bank well with these suckers lying in there I got room to put four more but I got a little different plan on that that'll be something coming up in the future and a different way of wanting to do add more power to it It'll be interesting you'll like that video but that'll be a ways away so once again you know there's everything's fused put the bus bars in so I don't have all these wires going in all these wires coming out pretty soon you start landing so many wires you're like now nah, make a bus bar put it in exactly what I did the other one looks just like that everything's got caps over it on the battery bank you know I got caps and everything over the positives and the negatives so even if you did drop something on here if you're coming down you say oh I got a wrench well there you go everything's covered so I'm not gonna cross over if something falls on or something gets in here it's not gonna cross over and hit that pretty cool and I did this little job here put the positives so you know there's a positive is negative again 
negative, all whites. White, positive, red, red to negative. So even though I'm jumping from a positive to negative, I'm showing that this side of here is my positive, and then I'm going over to a negative. So there's no confusion in here. All right, 24 volt system. Seems to be working pretty good. That's it for now. This will be another long video. Sorry.